After seeing various recent studies, there is still the misconception that you need a solar PV system for a home battery system to make sense. And like the misconceptions around heat pumps and electric cars and other things we address on the channel, this is another one I'd like to concentrate on. You don't need solar panels for these to make sense. In fact, I would go as far to say that it makes more sense to get a battery by itself than it does solar panels by itself. Because it's predictable, the savings are the same pretty much each day and it's all year round. There's no peaks, there's no summer and winter. It's predictable and although not for absolutely everybody out there, I think financially it does make more sense. Now, full disclosure, I work for these guys, but this isn't about them. It's about any battery system. So this video is basically saying you can save money with any system out there. I'm gonna basically talk about how much storage you need, the installation of it, and how ultimately you save money by just having a battery by itself. And that is ultimately key to having a time of day tariff. So a time of day tariff, again, for those that are unaware, is where you would have a cheap period, typically at night, where electricity is substantially cheaper and the rest of the day will typically be a bit more expensive. So the idea is we charge the battery up using the cheapest ele electricity, energy, charge it up, and then that powers the house through the rest of the day until the cheap rate comes round again and we charge back up. Now let me start with the easiest one to get out of the way the installation of this. A lot of people, me included, would kind of often go down the line of, I'm going for the cheapest quote that I get. And get three quotes for everything, especially when you're spending thousands of pounds. Get at least three quotes. This should be default behavior, I'd like to think. So let's imagine you've got three quotes. The cheapest, when you think, well, I know what battery I'm asking for, so does it really matter who installs it? You know what, I would say sometimes not really, but often there's a reason why someone may be more expensive. It could be just they charge more. It could be as simple as that. But the best installations and you know, the best customer experiences I've got feedback from. So I speak to a lot of people. The best experiences people have had are from those where, well, that the cables were done immaculately neat. They've tidied you up after themselves. They walked me through the quote beforehand and then they showed me how to use the app. They showed me how to use the systems and how to isolate the various things if I needed to. They then walked me through a time of day tariff. Are you aware that you can save money by doing this? They rung me up a month after installation to see if everything was okay. Is there anything you need? It's that sort of aftercare that I think is sometimes worth paying for. Now, if you're familiar and happy to just say, well, I know what I'm doing, it's fine. I just want cheapest chips is what I did, then I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that, but I'm just saying cheapest isn't always the best. On that little segue, should we say, there is a company that sponsored this channel called Heatable. They do battery systems, solar systems, both together, separately, whatever you want. They even do 0% finance for home batteries. Harry from the channel, who does the car reviews with me, he used Heatable as a customer. He bought his system, that's how we got introduced and therefore I'm more than happy to recommend them and have done for the last year or so because he had a positive experience. The messages that I get back from people that have followed that, again, have had a good experience. The Trustpilot review scores. Again, they seem to be very, very high. So I want to say thanks to Heatable and please do go to heatable.co.uk if you're after a battery system or solar or both because, well, it's one of your three quotes, isn't it? Word of mouth for me is the most powerful way of getting a good installer, and this is mine. Right, now let's move on to how do you save money with a home battery system, in terms of how does it work, the time of day tariffs, what sort of figures are we looking at? I'm not gonna go into how much it costs to install these batteries. I'm gonna give you part of your research to say, this is how much you should save. Then you can go and look for whatever battery system you're after, because some are cheap, some are more expensive, some are in the middle. There's too many variables for me to say, it would cost you this much. So I'm not trying to justify a battery 
because you'll save this much and it'll cost you this much because the cost is, well, it, it could be anywhere. I also don't want to make it into an advertisement for the people I work for, so therefore this is part of your research. Yes, they're expensive, but financially, it does make sense. Now, you're probably expecting me to go upstairs now to the whiteboard of truth to try and explain the facts and figures. No, 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 I'm staying here because the whiteboard of truth has had a baby. What we have here is a typical time of day tariff. So this is midnight, 6 a.m., 12, 6 p.m., and then back to midnight again. So a typical day, and this is based on, roughly anyway, the tariff I'm on. So I pay seven pence per kilowatt hour for six hours, and then the daily rate is 27.5 pence per kilowatt hour. The reason why I've put 8.5 there is to allow for a little bit of occasional grid usage at peak times and things like losses, inverter losses, things like that. So I've deliberately made this higher to account for any of those. I charge my battery up at 8.5 pence per kilowatt hour and then again that powers the house for the rest of the day and then it charges back up again and rinse and repeat. So instead of paying 27.5, I'm paying 8.5. So I'm effectively saving 19 pence per kilowatt hour for every bit of energy I use, any, every unit of energy I use, because I have a battery that's storing it when it's cheap. It's like stocking up on something at the supermarket when it's on offer. Let's assume that you use, we'll make it nice and simple, 10 kilowatt hours worth of electricity every day. So instead of paying 27.5 pence, I would be paying 8.5 pence. So 19, pence per kilowatt hour saving times 10 gives me a saving of £1.90 per day. Which doesn't sound like a lot, does it? £1.90 per day. But per year, that is £693.5. So £693.50 per year just by having a storage battery that can take advantage of that time of day tariff. Now, of course, if you're saying, well, I already have this tariff, is it worth me adding a battery to it? Some of what you use will be from this and some will be from this. So that's where you have to do some of your own research. I'm comparing this against typical flat rate tariff person with what you have to get and what you can do with a home battery system. If you use 20 kilowatt hours per day and have obviously a larger, more expensive battery, then that saving will be, well, pretty much double per year. So again, it's one of those where it's like getting a more efficient car. The more you drive, the more you save compared to the previous car. So this is, this is a twofold thing. A battery and a tariff is gonna give you this saving from having neither. Now this was, as I said earlier, based on 10 kilowatt hours of daily usage. So you use, let, let's write it up there. So now how do you go about sizing a battery? This is another factor which your installer should walk you through and listen to them essentially. Any good installer should be able to do this for you. So what a lot of people would do now is, well, if you use 10 kilowatt hours per day, then you want at least a 10 kilowatt hour battery. You don't need that, although I'll come to what I'm going to recommend later on, because all that you have to cover with the battery is the, this red part here, essentially three quarters of the day on this as example. For six hours, the energy is cheap. The battery is charging at that point and anything that the house uses is at that cheap rate and you can load shift. So give you a couple of examples. A dishwasher, I think that uses around one and a half kilowatt hours per cycle. A washing machine is similar, let's say one and a half. So with just two appliances, you're using three kilowatt hours. A third, in this example anyway, a third of the usage nearly is just with two appliances operating. So if you put the timers on those, and the vast majority out there, anything for the last 10 years, will have a timer on it in terms of washing machine or dishwasher, or probably should too if it didn't. So basically, put the timer on, get the dishwasher and the washing machine to run during this cheap period, and the battery doesn't have to provide the power for that. You've got six hours of the house base load, plus the washing machine, plus the dishwasher. They use, let's say, four kilowatt hours collectively, the house and those two. So we've only got another six kilowatt hours to worry about for the battery to charge up. 
that can make the battery installation cheaper. However, there is a certain logic into getting more battery than you need. You have to factor in degradation over time. You have to factor in the not always would you load shift. You, know, you might have to do an emergency wash or something or dishwasher or whatever. We're only having to look after, in this period anyway, six and this period four. Wow, that's terrible. Let me uh, do that again. Okay, I think this is a little easier to understand now. Four kilowatt hours for the cheap rate means the battery only has to do six kilowatt hours and therefore that's all it needs to do. But again, that buffer means the general rule of thumb that I use, and this will not be for everybody, but for the majority, we're playing the averages here, is take this figure here, once you've figured it out, how much your house will use in this period after load shifting, and then add about a third onto that. So in this case, that would give us eight kilowatt hours worth of battery, because it gives us a little bit of a buffer. However, sometimes it's based on whatever manufacturer you go for, what sizes they do. In my case, they do five or 9.5 kilowatt hour batteries. So I would go for the 9.5. It wouldn't make sense to go for the 13.5 because it's that much more expensive and I wouldn't really make much use of it. Unless there's something in the future coming up that you think, right, right we're going to this, so therefore we're gonna need more. You know, if you're going to change from gas uh, oven to an electric oven or a gas hob to an induction hob, something like that, that will increase this daily usage, then you think, OK, that's happening in the next few years. Let's factor that into these equations. Again, it's very difficult to, to, to size somebody's system up without actually speaking to them specifically and knowing their exact situation. I see too many people oversizing systems. That's why I'm kind of mentioning this. But what I see people doing is, well, I'm going to upgrade or replace my inverter or get more battery storage for just a couple of minor things. So the typical example is, well, if we're making tea, you know, the oven's on and we're just about within the realms of what the battery and inverter can cope with. And then someone turns the kettle on and we use peak rate electricity. So what? For what, a minute of that time that the kettle is used whilst you're cooking, yes, you're gonna use peak rate electricity. It's gonna cost you five pence more than if the battery could cover it all. Now, if that's an easy, cheap upgrade, fair enough, but there's no point in spending four figures more to cover the kettle, is, is what I'm trying to say. If you think, well, I can afford it, I'm gonna double the amount of storage I need, then fine. You know, I have a car that's quicker than I need. I just want a quicker car because I want it. You know, it, sometimes you buy something because you want it rather than you need it. I'm trying to give you the basics here, the minimum amount needed. So when you do look at how much a battery system costs from any manufacturer, then at least you can say, well, is it worth it given the savings I might have? But of course, something might change. Electricity prices might wildly fluctuate. If this gets more expensive and that stays the same, which is what has happened over the last few months, by the way, then the savings increase. If these two figures get closer together, then the savings decrease. There's lots of variables here and some of them are unpredictable. World events cannot be predicted. Yes, if everybody, and I get this a lot, if everybody charges up at night, then that becomes peak rate, doesn't it? Well, no, because industry will always run at the same time. People are always awake at the same time. And although, yes, this will help balance the system, we will just go from this being the cheap period to random half hours throughout the day being the cheapest period. And of course, you've got added benefits, depending on what you specify anyway, of if the power goes off, then I've got a battery backup. I can keep the power on. No one ever looks at a kitchen that you buy and spend tens of thousands of pounds on and then say, well, when's the kitchen gonna pay myself back? I just want discussion. Any comments is a good comment for me. Any interaction is great. If you could subscribe and like and all that crap that YouTubers throw at you. That's how you help a channel out. You don't have to become a member, which you can with me by clicking the join button next to subscribe for 99p a month. You get videos on Sunday instead of Friday. You can do that or you could just help a channel out that you like any channel by clicking and interacting and doing things. Another thing which no doubt will come up, which tariff do you recommend? On YouTube, I'm not going to say go for a specific tariff. Because, one, that tariff will, knowing my luck, change tomorrow. Or the eligibility for it will do. 
and that will ruin the entire video. It will become out of date very quickly. So that's one factor. Another one is some tariffs, like mine, are reliant on something else. So for example, my tariff is for electric vehicles. It actually contacts my charger or the car to, to give me that tariff. You know, it's locked in. If I didn't have that car or the charger, I could get this tariff. There are other companies out there that do cheaper tariffs than this and don't have that restriction. There are companies out there that do stuff for heat pumps, for EV chargers. There are even some based around batteries themselves. But what I can't do on here is say, this company has an EV tariff, but they don't check. It's in their TNCs, so you need an EV, but they don't check. I can't tell you that. Nor can I not tell you that some have aimed EV drivers, for example, but they don't care whether you have one or not. It's just aimed at an EV driver. It's not just solely for them. But other people in the comment section can do that. I mean, <laughs> I can't ask anybody out there to go against the TNCs. That would be very bad. Don't do it. And don't read the comment section for what other people are on in terms of their tariffs that do this already. Don't read the comment section for that. Just you know, read it for, for, for other things. Okay, well, hopefully that helped. Um, let me know what you think. And... Without the baby white board of truth, we need a name for it. What should we call it? It might turn up in other videos, who knows? Either way, thank you for watching. See you soon and, um, well, let's, let's keep saving money.